keystone of worship since Trinity Lutheran set its foundation in St. Louis generations ago. The pipe organ has been a catalyst of faith for our faithful, weaving notes upon notes across the pews through the history of an enduring and evolving congregation. The first thing that people see is the keys, that they're gouged and they're broken. Until keys became worn, controls so broke, pipes are very, very old. Broke, and pipes lost their voice. The and not another patch could cover for the lost and aging sounds of the century-old handcrafted pipes of timber and zinc. We are endeavoring to refurbish our organ. After a swell of momentum, the Trinity family of 750 strong made a commitment to restore and build a new organ within its downtown sanctuary. Years of dreaming turned into months of planning and in 2013 it became reality through the far-reaching capital campaign notes and notes. One of our great gems and assets here is uh, the organ that we use for worship and uh, it's important that when you're entrusted with a wonderful gift of God that you act as a good steward and you take care of that gift. Approaching year's end a team of masterful craftsmen from the Shantz Organ Company of Orville, Ohio began the heavy lifting. A modern console is hoisted and a new gallery organ a mere 20 percent of its future whole sounds for the first time from the back balcony, and one by one, key by key, pipe by pipe, a pair of Shantz musicians tune it, giving it a collective voice for the new space. All the while, an urgent timeline pushes the rest of the crew across the way to expose and dismantle the grand chamber that had been intact since 1928. Hollowed out, frame and all, the broken and useless parts are pitched. Pipes and pieces still worth an encore were saved by design to be restored in the workshop where organs are born and where this first came to form. We give thanks to God for what we hear today and I hope you, that you have appreciated being in on the maiden voyage of this instrument. A voyage for the ears and the soul, and it was just a small beginning for a grander experience ahead. And it was magnificent. We've only got 25% of the instrument playing, and it sounded like an orchestra. The gallery pipes become a bridge for Trinity's musical ministry to continue while the Schatz team crafted the rest of the organ back in Ohio through the winter months. And upon the team's return in March of 2014, a tractor trailer of new and renewed is emptied and spread out, much like the strategy to attack a new puzzle. It starts with a footprint, blueprints, and a sturdy hoist. This custom installation is like a repeat performance because the crew had already built the three-story chamber completely in its own shop, only to take it apart for the voyage to St. Louis to be erected again to celebrate Trinity's 175th anniversary in the same year as St. Louis's 250th. That's good. In a blink of a few days, the organ chamber is framed out and the team begins installing all the brawn behind what will be okay. the beauty, mechanical pipes and wind chests. The mystery of Trinity's new organ slowly reveals itself as she puts the squeeze on the crew working all levels at once. Right there. The final polish is applied to some of Trinity's restored pipes, cleaned up and now with a new voice for a homecoming. Each gently placed and some hammered into place the only way they could fit. All tools of the trade are pressed into gear to ultimately connect the musician with the full instrument, balconies apart. The console will send a, a signal into this box and then this box just sort of divides it out and, and sends a signal to which pipe to play. Back to that puzzle spread atop the pews. There's still thousands of shiny new zinc pipes to unsort and group into their like ranks. All to prepare what may be the most satisfying part of the entire build. It's the handover, hand up, and hand through supply chain, where the last set of hands, no tools, gets to gently set the pipes into custom pre-drilled holes. We know we're on our home stretch. Finishing up. 
And some of the last of Trinity's treasured restored wooden pipes are also set for placement. Yeah, these are original. And a lot of times they'll stamp them. Um, well, let's see here, we've got two different notes. We have an A here, and then we have an A sharp. So you have to know which one's which. From the tall to the very small and everything in between, after a thousand reps or more, the build nearly comes to an end when this musical forest of zinc and pine has fully sprouted, but for the biggest and grandest pipes of all. The ones that stand front and center and cover for all the rest like a standing sentry. The crew's exacting design and months of labor make this look far too easy. Ultimately, the pipes tell us uh, what it will sound like. One grand finish leads to another grand start. The final weeks of voicing and tuning. That same methodical process to marry the organ and all of its new voices to this very historic sanctuary. It all leads to a morning of triumph and jubilation on Easter Sunday, the grand debut of the new pipe organ, with fingertips orchestrating a balcony-to-balcony -balcony performance. Joined by brass and choir. Well, fantastic pops to mind, you know. It reminds me of the great organs of the world uh, here at Trinity. And uh, I'm so glad that this project worked out so well. This packed pew congregation lifted in song by the restored and new sounds of 3,300 pipes. On a day when we celebrate them, the most important thing uh, as Christians that we believe that Christ rose from the dead, um, to use the most powerful instruments that we have it's just incredible, and uh, the organ did a fantastic job today in assisting us worship God for what he's done. After 175 years of ministry, this Easter did bear the birth of a more passionate and impactful grand instrument to reach out to all those who were inspired by its musical beauty and the uplifting and spiritual messages it will help deliver for generations to come.